Welcome to M&A Mondays, the UK's first YouTube series dedicated to all things M&A. From interviews with the leading figures in the industry, to coffee chats with analysts, diversity panels, all the way through to workshops, we'll be covering it all. We do hope you enjoy the video and please give us a like and a follow on our social media. Thank you very much. Welcome to another episode of M&A Mondays, the UK's first YouTube series dedicated to all things M&A. My name is Pristi and I'm the head of the healthcare division at the UCL M&A group. And alongside me is Nicola, an energy and power analyst and an events officer within the group. Today, we are absolutely delighted to be interviewing Spiro Joachim. Spiro was born in Lebanon and later graduated with a master's degree in business administration and management at the Institut Superior de Gestion in 1991. After that, he started his career at Credit Lyon, working at Paris, where he got to the vice president position. Then he joined City, where he worked his way up from a VP to a managing director. And then in August of 2008, Spiro joined Lazard as a partner, MD, and the global head of natural resources investment banking. Spiro is also the co-chairman of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. We're incredibly pleased to have Spiro with us today. And so without further ado, uh, let's get started. Hi, Spiro. How are you doing today? Good morning to you both. I'm, I'm grateful for the introduction. Well, let's get started then. Um, having studied a business degree, were you always interested in the finance sector or was this something you developed as a student? Um, actually, it came gradually um, in that I have always been interested in the corporate finance side of, of finance, um, taken in its totality. Not so much the... Um, uh, the trading side, uh, but the investing side, the corporate finance side. And I, from the very beginning, I started studying it at school and at the margin of, of school where I took some, um, some courses myself, especially the courses leading to CFA. Uh, and so it was always the advisory investing fundamental side of finance, which attracted me the most. That's great, thank you. Um, could you tell us a bit about your career background and what eventually drew you to Lazard? Additionally, are there any key differences working for an independent advisory firm such as Lazard that you prefer? Look, when I started in Paris in 1991, as you correctly mentioned, Lazard was and, and is still a very, a, a very great uh, aspirational firm to go to in France. And uh, it so happened that uh, 121 Boulevard Osman, which was the, the previous um, headquarters of Lazard before we moved very recently up the street, was very near to, to where I used to work. And it was always, for me, aspirational that one day I would get into that building and hopefully one day I would be a partner at that great firm. So um, I always had this ambition, this aspiration to go into into Lazard and work at Lazard one day. Uh, and it took me uh, from 1991 to 2008 to do that. Um, I think um, what really drew me to the firm, it's that it is synonymous with excellence. It is synonymous with great independent advice. It is synonymous with uh, bringing all sorts of talents together to deliver the best independent advice to corporate clients, investors, and governments. Um, and I still believe that despite the fact that we have many um, independent firms that are as, as, as good and as valuable, Lazard remains in this particular aspect, uh, it, it continues to incarnate the very best. Now, my question is, uh, what led you to become the global head of natural resources? And have you always been interested in this particular sector? Yes, uh, I started my career uh, in uh, in corporate finance at Crédit Lyonnais. Did a lot of steel and steel-related um, uh, financings uh, as a as a 
as, as a very junior banker, I was in um, corporate finance teams that catered for uh, steel, uh, steel companies and steel making companies in that entire value chain. Um, and then I dabbled a bit in project financing, did some oil, some oil, um, oil financings, particularly uh, LNG. And then gradually, I I specialized in that you know, in that space. When I um, moved to uh, uh, to Schroders, um, which basically was an antecedent of City One City, bought Schroders out in uh, 2000, I believe. I did also um, a lot of um, project and corporate financing related to the natural resources industry uh, in in its uh, in its broad spectrum. Um, and one thing leads to the other. You like the industry, you like the people, you become knowledgeable about it. You have an expertise that you um, that you further entrench. Um, and then when I um, when um, I became a managing director at City in uh, 2005, I was already leading a small department there um, that was mainly metals and mining, not oil and gas at the time. Um, and there were some circumstances which uh, basically allowed me to move to Lazard in 2008. And initially at Lazard, I was only responsible for metals and mining in Europe. And then it became global. Uh, in, in 2010, and that in 2014, we merged oil and gas with mining to create the department that I have the privilege of uh, being responsible of at this moment. Um, so, um, and natural resources through and through. Um, obviously, now uh, the facets of, of the work change in that uh, we have to do more renewables, we have to do more energy transition, following our clients, really, in terms of how they look at, um, at this value chain and how they create value across that chain. Um, and so consequently, there is no one dull day. And I continue to learn as the, uh, uh, as the department that I am in charge of continues to expand with a view to responding to our clients' needs. Uh, thank you for that great answer. And now for my next question, uh, out of all deals that uh, you have worked on, are there any that particularly stand out to you? And can you tell, tell us a little bit about them? I don't think there is one in particular. I've done a few of them which uh, uh, were distinctive in that they were complicated, multifaceted, um, and determinative in terms of the in terms of the outcome, I think the uh, two which uh, spring to mind is when we advised Qatar Holding in connection with the merger between Glencore and Extrata, where um, whatever we have done with Qatar Holding helped increase the price, improve the price for the Extrata shareholders when the board of directors of Extrata had agreed a lower price. And, and this was a uh, I think a great achievement in terms of combining corporate financing, tactic, and uh, jurisdiction and expertise. And that again is one of those elements that um, this, uh, distinguished Lazard in that we were able to bring in many capabilities across the firm to deliver that outcome. Um, I think the one that also was very interesting is it was to help the board of directors of Shell in connection with the merger with PG. Uh, we came at the end of the process um, when the board determined that it needed independent advice to ensure that the economics and the terms of the transactions as they were proposed continue to remain uh, value enhancing for shareholders. Uh, we did a humongous amount of work in four weeks. Uh, we did the equivalent of probably four months of work in, uh, in, in, in three weeks. Um, we lived in La Haye, in the offices of Shell, and we did a huge amount of work, very condensed, high stressed, in order to deliver an opinion to the, uh, to the board of directors that indeed the deal will, will continue to generate um, value for the Shell shareholders, despite the fact that at the time the oil prices had been in a free fall at the end of 2015 and the terms were such that the margins of safety were quite thin. Uh, we did a lot of work 
uh, high pressure, um, again, multidimensional, many facets of the firm came in to support this advice. Uh, and we delivered, I think, a, uh, a very favorable outcome. You're never, the, 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 the reality, and I think the conclusion of these two things is that you never um, lead a deal on your own. You don't have um, uh, a primacy, if you will, of the advice on your own. You ought to bring in many people to create the best advice you can because invariably, whatever we do is multifaceted in nature. And I think that was a, um, a, a great example in both cases of this, uh, of this particular aspect in our, in our work. That sounds very interesting, thank you. So how has COVID-19 affected the natural resources sector and where do you see the industry in a few years time? I think it affected it to the extent that uh, indeed the the um, and and you've seen it at the beginning of it, uh, oil prices collapsed. Uh, WTI prices in the U.S. of oil were negative at some in some um, uh, over a certain period of time. Uh, it impelled companies to rethink completely their financial frameworks, their business models for that period of time between say the beginning of April and end of May. A lot of liquidity was raised, a lot of um, readjustments in corporate financings were made uh, for the purposes of stabilizing uh, ships. And clearly priorities had to change. If anything, what it did was that it, it, it accelerated the drive of corporate managers in the oil and gas industry to migrate towards energy transition, be more emphatic about the plans related to energy transition in order to uh, accompany this uh, new phase and reflect it in their corporate realities. With respect to mining, what you have seen was that after um, there was some element of, um, uh, of hope uh, with respect to uh, ease, ease of lockdowns in the summer, consumption went back up. And as a uh, supply of materials, be it copper, nickel, iron, ore, aluminium had, had, had been restrained at the beginning of the, uh, uh, of the pandemic, prices had, had increased quite considerably um, uh, and continue to be on an upward trend, particularly now as for these uh, EV, uh, EV-centric metals such as copper, um, there is a new and continuing and perennial source of demand which will be there for a long period of time against the backdrop of very limited supply or new supply coming into the pipeline. You saw the gold price go up quite a bit uh, as the crisis intensified uh, around the uh, late spring, early, early, early summer, now to moderate, obviously, uh, uh, as things are coming gradually to normal. So it, it was very active. It was multidimensional. Uh, I did not have to deal uh, with one cycle, but three, as I tried to explain very briefly. And it was fascinating to observe how corporate managers change their mindset and their strategic course of action in order to respond to those times and protect their, uh, their companies at first um, as well as uh, take advantage of value opportunities uh, to, to, to unlock such value. So it was very interesting uh, to be at the midst of that and you know, working within that context. That was very informative, thank you. So what would you say are your typical day-to-day -day activities that your job entails? Um, Invariably, I spend uh, long hours with clients. Um, my job is client-facing, uh, and I have um, responsibility of a um, large number of large clients here for the firm. Uh, so invariably, 90% of my time by choice and by design is client-facing. Uh, so I do a lot of now video conferences with clients. Um, and that ranges from talking about corporate financing, balance sheet, valuation, strategic opportunities as, as they arise uh, and ways in which uh, to uh, increase value. And that is all time consuming. Um, so very much client facing. Um, 
uh, I continue to emphasize a lot the personal well-being. So I do a lot of sports during the day. Um, uh, invariably, it starts very early in the morning, uh, probably a little bit before lunchtime and um, late in the evening. So um, pretty busy, actually. I, I have to say that as we went into lockdown and our, our livelihood have, 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 have changed, I find myself, um, if I may say, living more in that I sleep less, work more, train more. And that uh, is a continuum which uh, we all agree isn't meant to last because it can't, but at least it has been a, uh, a, a pivot in, in our daily life, at least in mine, which uh, it is quite fascinating to observe and live in. Um. Can you tell us a little bit about your our role as a co-chairman of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee? Um, it is really to continue to build on the foundations of diversity that we have at the firm um, and ensure that we are totally at the cusp of the very best practices that we have in um, in the world. I think we've we've very quickly recognized, but that was years ago. But we very quickly recognize that um, uh, the, the diversity and inclusion agenda is at the forefront of, um, of, of priorities, be it uh, in diversity with respect to sex, to religious beliefs, to personalities, to religions, and indeed um, uh, personal preferences. And all of those are equally important. The affinity groups we have at Lazada are diverse. We have, we have five or six of them, and we try and put, and, and put forward this agenda in as um, a priority away as we can. In our daily uh, lives in the office, as we project ourselves with our clients, with our st stakeholders at large, and you are our stakeholders, uh, uh, potential entrance into, into the firm. Um, and I think we see that uh, this is resonating with clients, this is resonating with you, this is resonating with the society at large. Investment banks, advisory firms, uh, participants in the capital markets are, uh, are, are, are companies which are intrinsically inherent uh, to the social fabric in which they operate. And so therefore, DNI is 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 you know is core to that. And when I was asked by uh, the by senior management to, to, to spearhead that. I embraced it to the extent that I have been really very uh, fortunate to, to have early experiences and early exposure to that uh, as I, I led teams at, at City and at the beginning of my time here at Lazard where I had to deal with, uh, with certain uh, interesting situations and, and differences that um, were quite interesting at the time. And so um, I, I embrace that challenge, um, and, and my objective, as well as my partners who do DNI on a day-to-day -day basis, is to take this uh, to the next level and keep it at the forefront of the operating and strategic priorities of the firm. And I'm glad to say that senior management has embraced that wholeheartedly and irreversibly. So we have an unswerving commitment to DNI. And we will continue to demonstrate that day to day as we communicate with our stakeholders at large over the next few weeks and months. Definitely. And just following up from the, that last question, how do you combine your focus on and commitment to diversity and inclusion with your natural resources expertise? It's, it's very interesting as a question, uh, Nicola, because um, most of uh, the clients that I deal with uh, are clients that have also embraced that strategy, objective, priority from the beginning, particularly as they deal in many countries, they deal in many subsectors, they deal in many um, societal segments that have impelled them to um, go and, and drop that road very early on. Um, and so invariably when I am, I am working on my DNI objective and scope of work, I speak to a few of them in order to learn what they have done before and take uh, a cross read from, from, from their achievements and their, um, and their challenges. 
I would say that it is really mutually inclusive from the standpoint uh, that as I have been more exposed to that and, and, and do that, it has made me um, humbly uh, a person that is more attuned to those elements that are incredibly important in the way um, our clients perceive us, our stakeholders perceive us, but also more importantly, how we ourselves uh, uh, foster, devise and deliver our advice on a, on a day to day basis. Thank you for those insights. And just uh, for my last question, uh, do you have any key tips for young individuals looking to pursue a career in investment banking? Work hard, be hopeful, be optimistic, and never give up. Well, those are all the questions that we have today. Uh, I just want to thank you again, uh, Spiro, for joining us today and taking us your time to speak to us. I really do believe that our viewers will greatly benefit from insights and benefits that you have uh, given this interview. And also a quick thank you for, to our viewers. And please do consider of, uh, subscribing to our channel and liking this video. It's a great privilege. Thank you.